Welcome back to the adventures of the Florida Powerboat Club. Stu Jones along with producer Ryan McCoy here in the Pompano Beach studio. And guys, it is truly an adventure of powerboating in paradise. Uh, probably an epic adventure this year with seven days in the beautiful Bahamas. Uh, we tried to hit all 700 islands, but we're just going to nail down about five or six. We left off on our last episode in Bimini. So let's rejoin the group uh, in Bimini, and we're going to head from there to Chub Key, Nassau, and beyond. It's all here with episode number two with feature coverage of the 32nd annual Bahamas Poker Run. And before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor for the FPC 2023 series of events is Mercury Racing, celebrating 50 years of wide open. And by these sponsors in alphabetical order, Big Thunder Marine, Blackwater Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, Concept Boats, Deep Impact Custom Boats, Fountain Power Boats, Midnight Express Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, Plantation Boat Mart, SD Marine Group, Isla Morada, and by Statement Marine. Day two and ready for another adventure, we headed off to the Sapona and we found that it was much too bumpy and wavy there, uh, not really a safe uh, anchoring situation. So we decided to pass on the Sapona and instead we went to the North Beach, uh, which is over on the west side of the island. And uh, yeah, a little bit of swell coming in there, but once we got anchored close to the beach, uh, it was a nice setup for everybody. And this is where we were gonna spend the next couple of hours, two or three hours, just hanging out on the boats and enjoying this beautiful long stretch of uh, sandy beach on the north end of Bimini. Well, this turned out to be a fun afternoon and um, Tyler once again got the drone up and got us some nice shots where you could see the development of the island. Uh, this is what they call now Rockwell Island, the north end of Bimini. It's getting mostly private luxury homes are being built. And that is the way off in the distance, the Virgin Scarlet Lady, uh, a new Virgin cruise ship's uh, seven day cruise. They make one stop in Bimini. In fact, we're gonna be on that ship for the New Year's cruise uh, in just a few weeks. Uh, but one thing I wanna point out about anchoring here on North Beach, or for that matter, uh, any sandy beach, you can get in really, really close to the beach here and trim your motors up. But it's important to have a second anchor because you want to throw your bow anchor out, bring the stern towards the beach, and then to stop the boat from swinging, just a smaller anchor off of one of your rear cleats uh, to stabilize the boat. If you have two, that's even better. But you can see how all these boats are floating nice and uh, at right angles to the beach. And that is really what you want to have. That's the most desirable situation. We did get a little bit of hassle from a security guard who came along and said that now that there's development here, that this is now a private beach. Uh, we, we wouldn't have any of it. I don't know. It's something that we've done here for years, probably 25 years we've been using this beach. And I know that we're going to have some opposition here as we go forward because these homeowners are building these homes. And uh, the security guard pretty much gave up after we were ignoring him. And I just think that the beach is the beach. It's, it's always been here for all of us boaters. We're not doing anything. We're not littering. We're not causing any problems. We're not playing loud music. Uh, and I hope that we're able to continue this as we go forward because the section of beach that's right up close to the resort is now reserved for the cruise ship guests when they come in. And so that area is no longer available to us. So that's off limits. And if this is off limits, that's not going to leave us much more of an opportunity to anchor here along this beach. And that means we're going to have to start looking for other places to go. So fingers crossed. I hope we can continue to do this uh, in the years to come. And we'll certainly find out in 2024 when we head back to Bimini. And one other point I'd like to mention is remember now it is Thursday. So the crowds have not come over yet. The crowds from the mainland, Fort Lauderdale and Miami are not here yet. They're going to come in on the weekend. So um, being that it's a Thursday, we kind of had the beach to ourselves and that will change by Friday afternoon and certainly Saturday. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we like to visit Bimini midweek and be out of here by Friday morning. Uh, that seems to be a program that's working well for us.
And fast forward about two hours, and we have moved the party now to Resorts World Bimini to the adult pool, uh, which is where we have the monkey business bar. And this is where we're going to have some drinks and play out our poker cards. Some nice shots here from the drone. Tyler got the uh, perfect angle of Resorts World Bimini Hilton uh, Casino down in your bottom right corner. There's the adult pool and the monkey business bar. And uh, just and there's that cruise ship off in the distance uh, going to get ready to sail again. Uh, but this is where we got the crew together to have a few drinks and play out the poker cards. And it was really just a perfect venue. It's not overly crowded because, again, it's Thursday afternoon and this pool gets slammed on the weekends. But we'll be long gone by then. Congratulations, Roger and Pam, for winning the poker run. Let's hear it from everybody. You having fun? We are live. We're live on Stu's phone. We love you, Stu. Okay, we're live here. Tarzan. LakeburyPokerRun.com. That's it. Oh, see, good promoter there. Good promoter there. Okay. We got everybody. Everybody having fun? Uh, Yeah, that's it. We got everybody here. Okay. Good stuff. There he is. He made it. Okay, you did make it. I got drink tickets for you. Right here, Shane. Give us a hey. Give us a hey. Give us a hey, Mike. Come on, everybody. Give us a hey. All right, good stuff. All right, let's do this. All right, great time. Thank you. Gonna spin around here. All right, good, good, good. And hey! You got it, bro. And it's all about the monkey business. At the end of the day, that's all it is. Monkey business in Bimini. Well, that was a really fun party. And once again, congratulations to Roger and Pam Anderson for winning the poker run. Uh, These wide shots now, let's talk a little bit more about the resort. You can see a lot of our boats are docked right there in that that corner of the marina. Um, We get the best slips that we can possibly get. The, the main face dock in front of the pool is casino gamblers and uh, rated, you know, special people, I guess, VIPs. So we don't normally get those docks, but you can see now there's a shot of the marina. All those docks there are floating docks. That's called the Mega Marina, and that's where most of our boats will always go. You can see way off in the distance, that's the continued development of the island. They're doing a lot of excavation and uh, reclaiming land and building a lot of big, beautiful homes. So there's your wide shot uh, looking down at Scarlet Lady over on the cruise ship uh, terminal uh, calling once a week here every Thursday. It's the last stop on a seven-day cruise that they do with the Scarlet Lady. Uh, Incidentally, you can rent those homes too on that little island to the left. Those are private homes that you can rent uh, directly from the resort. Most of them are like four-bedroom with their own dock. So that's always an option as well for people who are visiting Resorts World Bimini. It's day three, guys, and that means uh, we're on the move uh, as Team Naughty Fever pulling off the dock. Uh, Day three means we're going to be leaving Bimini and heading across the Bahama Bank to Chub Key, and that's part of our normal agenda. And for that Chub Key trip, it's about 100 miles altogether, uh, mostly across the Bahama Bank, which will be primarily a fairly calm ride. But I always caution everybody. Uh, because at the end of that trip, the last 20 miles, we're out of the Bahama Bank and we're into what we call the tongue of the ocean, uh, where the depths will go from about 15 feet to about five or 6,000 feet and a noticeable difference in the sea conditions almost immediately. So we're kind of getting ready for that because we do have some strong winds coming out of the southwest and we're going to have to be prepared for that later in the day. But for the most part, uh, departing here from Bimini, it's going to be a beautiful ride as we uh, head south and then uh, take a turn right off of the tail end of the Sapona shipwreck is about our turning point where we will start running on a due east heading across the Bahama Bank. And here we are at Chub Key and uh, a beautiful island it is uh, nicely developed took them many years to get it to this state but it's very well maintained and they did just I think a spectacular job of developing this island. Uh, the marina is all floating dock, and this is the main Chub Key Clubhouse uh, where they do have the restaurant as well as a small assortment of hotel rooms in the same building. And continuing now over to the ocean side, you can see this a beautiful pool with like a grotto bar, swim up bar, uh, a nice sandy beach. And there you are looking south, our destination, Nassau. 
And here now, a great shot of the marina. You can see a lot of our boats uh, nestled in here on these uh, floating docks. Everybody got their own slip. The dock master was very ready for us and assigned everybody and uh, was there to help. So I was very impressed with the way they handled our group's arrival. Because remember, we have like 17 boats and, you know, we all kind of arrive at the same time. And some of us went straight to the fuel dock, which is right at the entrance to the marina. It's always good to get a little more fuel uh, before taking that final ride into Nassau. Our stop over here was scheduled to be about two hours altogether, two and a half hours, which would include lunch and then a little time in the pool. Uh, but with the conditions that we had offshore, we were a little bit worried about heading across that southwest channel, which is 40 miles, into a very strong head sea. So we had some concerns and we were certainly considering the likelihood of staying here for one night. Uh, and going forward with our planning for 2024, I think we're just going to go ahead and make this a stopover and get the rooms booked in advance. Uh, because when we did run into a problem with the weather, we decided it was smart to stay. We hadn't prepared for that and we didn't really have a good selection of rooms. And some of us got lucky and got a nice villa or a room in the hotel. Um, one crew actually rented uh, a work boat that was based in the harbor here and they used basically these sleeping quarters uh, for the workers and the sailors on this big work boat. Uh, others were able to get some off-site properties, uh, you know, a few miles down the road off the resort. So, um, and others just stayed on their boats. Uh, we want to be prepared for that if it does happen. So I think that's the plan going forward is to go ahead and get some rooms booked for the 2024 event. Uh, which will be again in June. And I think that most of our attendees are going to be happy with that decision because I find that most people when they get here, they want to stay longer because this Chub Key just has this kind of like magnetism. It makes you want to stay here. It's such a nice casual resort uh, and people just want to stay. So uh, I think that's what's going to make this uh, work out much better. Uh, where we'll still continue on to Atlantis and do our three-night stay there. And that will effectively make that a seven-day, seven-night uh, trip for the 2024 edition of the Bahamas Poker Run. So I think no better way to wrap up this segment than uh, just a little flyover of this uh, fantastic pool that they have. And you'll see some of our club members really enjoying the facilities here at Chub Key Resort. Beautiful Saturday morning here in Chub Key. Uh, it wasn't planned this way for this Bahamas Poker Run. We had expected to come here yesterday, have some lunch, hang out in the pool, and then giddy up and head over to Nassau. Well, that didn't happen because we had some eight-foot seas here with these strong southwest winds that are kind of uncommon for this kind of this time of the year. Uh, but it worked out. It was uh, a bit of an adventure staying here at Chub Key for some of us. Uh, more on that, but basically some stayed in villas. Some stayed on their own boats, some stayed in a big uh, barge uh, ship that they rented, and we stayed in some food quarters over here about a mile uh, off the resort. Uh, but otherwise here now, uh, what may be an uneventful trip, hopefully, it's uh, about 7.30 now. We've all had coffee and, uh, and breakfast sandwiches, and so we're all back out on the boats and heading out here from Chub Key and hoping for some uh, much more tame seas uh, for the 40 mile crossing as we head to Nassau. But uh, it's all part of the adventure here on the 32nd annual Bahamas Poker Run. And as planned, we had a nice ride uh, for the 40 miles crossing and uh, arriving now in Nassau Harbor where there's always gonna be a lot of cruise ship activity. It's a very busy cruise ship port and it's uh, easy to find on the GPS. You can stay on plane as you get into the port, but when you get close to the cruise ships, you have to come off plane and just idle, and that'll take you up to the entrance of the Atlantis Marina. Uh, and here we are all now coming into Atlantis. They do ask that you be prepared for this with your radios on. Uh, we called in on channel 16 and got a working channel. Uh, they did try to assign us slips one by one in a very long and painful operation. Uh, I had requested that they just give us all the slip numbers, but the Atlantis Marina likes to greet all of their boaters one by one. 
The problem is, is they don't have enough staff to do that in an expeditious way. Uh, so they were kind of making us all just sit here in the harbor and one by one call in and then move the people to each location. Uh, that didn't work and I expressed that to the dock master later and I requested that when we do get here in the future that we can get our slip assignment so we can get settled in. It is a big marina and it's often a very long walk to get up to the uh, to the main hotel. Well you have to take a taxi from the dock master's office uh, or on-site uh, vehicles. They have shuttles that take you to the various lobbies and those are the most really the most convenient I think when you first arrive though, when you have luggage, it's just easier to get in a taxi and go to your hotel lobby and get checked in. A beautiful marina, very well maintained, obviously a lot of big yachts in every direction, uh, but enough space for all of us to get slips uh, and careful that we have to tie the lines up for the tide. We have about a three and a half to four foot tide and we have all fixed piers. So it's important guys to have long lines uh, on your boat and spring lines to make sure that you would adapt for the tide. And everybody settled in appropriately flying that Bahamas courtesy flag. Uh, so now our goal is to get off the dock and uh, get into some form of transportation to get over to the resort that we can all get checked in and start enjoying Atlantis. And here's what you can expect when you do check into your room, uh, looking off our balcony, uh, these amazing views uh, of the Atlantis grounds and all of the water park and fountains and the landscaping. It really is a fabulous experience to stay here. I honestly can't remember if we stayed in the Reef Tower or the Cove Tower, but we typically offer our guests uh, their choice of which tower they'd like to stay in. And once everybody gets settled in, of course, it's time to enjoy the amenities on site, which includes uh, all of the water parks and, of course, uh, cruising around the island. There's fine dining everywhere, and a, not to mention a giant casino, which seems to stay busy around the clock. And now moving into day five of our Bahamas adventure. And this is gonna be a play day for all of us here at Atlantis. Uh, we take one day off where there's no cruising. And if anybody does wanna go out on their boats, they're welcome to because clearly there's a lot of cool destinations nearby to Nassau and Paradise Island. Tyler got a chance to get the drone up flying and uh, that's a nice shot of the uh, Harbor Villas, which are adjacent to the marina. It's not really a part of Atlantis, but you can get rooms here. I like it because if you stay in one of these units, most of them are two and three bedroom, you're just a few steps from the marina. So it puts you right on the doorstep to the marina. And for somebody like me, who's an event organizer, that turns out to be very, very convenient. But most people prefer to stay in the main Atlantis resort. And as I said earlier in the show, uh, we give everyone a selection of which tower they'd like to stay in. And it, typically that could involve uh, either the Coral Tower or the Royal Tower, the Reef or the Cove. And I think that these are some of the best drone shots that we've had uh, ever, you know, of Atlantis. Tyler got that little mini up and uh, got some really nice stuff. These are some of the water park features that we've all heard about or seen. And, uh, you know, not, not for everybody, but certainly with all the families being here and the younger kids, without a doubt, all of these cool water slides are a big attraction. And there's so many to choose from, but the Rapids Water Park would say had the most widespread appeal because we could all do it you know all ages uh, and get on these uh, little floats and they used to have the lazy river but this is not the lazy river you can see that it is fast and furious and wet and you're bumping into your neighbor and it's just a blast we had so much fun uh, whipping around on these little waterways uh, in the tubes and I think for most people this was just a big hit remember we had an entire play day uh, the first day that we arrived at Atlantis was a non-boating day, so we had plenty of time to do all of these activities, and I think most of us spent a lot of time here at the Rapids uh, Water Park.
Right here. Have a good way. And remember that for those of us who were a little more adventurous, like my sons Tyler and Max, these water slides were also a big hit. I remember 20 years ago doing these, but I think those days are over for me. Wow. And fast forward to day six now, and it's time for more adventures afloat as we head back out on the waterways. This time it's for our day trip to Spanish Wells, and it's got a multi-stop destination, about a 50-mile trip from Paradise Island. Uh, we're riding today with Ivan Lopez on his Nortec 390 Sport, uh, Jeff Tomlinson uh, from Nortec riding along with us. And uh, so, yeah, Simon indeed decided to stay back. We had about 10 boats join us for the day trip, and here we are now arriving at Royal Island Sandbar. This is a popular stop. Uh, and it's the time to come here is when it's low tide and that's when the sandbar is the shallowest so you can get your boat right up onto the sandbar you can see over to the center of the bar the water is extremely shallow but on these outer edges is where we typically like to anchor and once again remember guys two anchors is the best way to do it uh, trim up your outboards a stern anchor and a bow anchor and get you right onto that nice sandy shoal the swings are a big hit they're fairly new they were installed here recently and remember we do have our tour guide jordan lambkin who rode along with us and brought some of his crew uh, he's from nassau and he is always a uh, part of our team every time we come out here to the bahamas because he's local he's a bahamian he's an avid boater he's in the marine business and he's always very helpful with his crew to get us to these cool hideaway spots. Uh, he and his team were the responsible for putting these uh, swings in a few years back. And they're obviously a big hit for everybody. So let's get down at water level and walk around and check out some of our happy teams enjoying this uh, beautiful day in paradise. Well, we all had a fantastic uh, stopover at Royal Island, but now just about five or six miles further down, uh, we're in Spanish Wells now, and this is our scheduled lunch stop at the Wreckers Bar. And they have their own marina basin here. Uh, you look down on the shore, you can see those blue awnings. That's where the restaurant is. And the great part is, is that Captain Jordan made plans to get all the staffing there to make sure that we could have a nice lunch because you know, we had a good sized group of about 60 plus people. Uh, normally they wouldn't be able to handle that many people uh, but with having the plans and having a group here to help us get these plans in place it worked out very well a nice shot here again from the drone of Spanish Wells you can see it's a very developed little island and the most developed really in the area I wish that we could spend a little more time here but there really are not any hotels or any place for us to stay so it's just really just a good stopover for lunch 
And there is one more scheduled destination for this trip today, uh, and that is going to be the Pig Beach. It's the next island over. And we've always enjoyed going there. It's probably one of the best Pig Beaches that we've uh, been to because there's several in the Bahamas. And I like it because it's uh, the pigs are really behaved and there's a controlled feeding experience. It's got a nice cove and there's a, there's a really cool little bar, a beach bar there as well. Uh, but the problem today is that we still have these strong winds and we have some storms that are going to be moving in shortly. And we decided to cut the day short and get a launch. Uh, as soon as we finish lunch, we could get a launch out of here and start heading back. Remember, it's about 50 miles one way. So it's altogether a 100 mile round trip from Paradise Island here to Spanish Wells. So I think it's more important that we think about our safety and uh, get a good start to head back. And as it was, we still had a pretty rough ride going back. And that's the one thing that you have to be aware of here in the Bahamas. These uh, storms and squalls can really just come up out of nowhere. So it's important to really monitor the weather closely. And especially when you're getting settled in and you're having a nice time here at lunch, you know, and you're still 50 miles from your home port. Uh, always good to monitor the weather and be prepared. And sometimes you got to break up the party a little sooner and get in the boat and start heading back. And on that return trip, it was extremely windy. A lot of us did get caught in the rain. Can't say it was the nicest ride that we've taken. Uh, here's a shot from the back of Mark Berman's 60-foot Sunseeker. You can see the winds are just howling. But fortunately, everybody got back to Atlantis safely. And moving forward now into day seven, and we've got a big trip back now from Atlantis all the way back to the mainland. And fortunately, the weather has cooperated. Uh, the winds have gone away, the rain has gone away, and uh, there's a beautiful yacht. This is kind of a normal scene around Atlantis. Uh, nice company to have for sure. But we got the group together and some people left earlier. Sometimes we kind of stagger all of the departures. Some people like to get a really early start around seven or eight. I think this start was somewhere around 9 a.m. Um, most of the boats joined us. Riding now again with Simon and Dee on this uh, Fountain 38 SCX model. And it looks like we have Brandon Mayer and his 40 Mystic as our wingman today. Uh, and beautiful conditions. God, it's just uh, fabulous. Uh, light winds and uh, calm here in the harbor. Might be a little bit bumpier out there in the Bahamas Bank. But for the most part, I think we've got great weather for the trip home today. Altogether, estimating at somewhere around uh, 225 miles uh, back to mainland. Uh, for many of these boats, that's fine. They can manage that on full fuel. Uh, some of us would like to stop in Bimini just for lunch or for another squirt of fuel. And remember now, it is Monday, so Bimini shouldn't be too crowded. But one caution uh, I'd like to throw out there is that sometimes Bimini gets slammed all weekend on a nice weekend. And the one fuel location there at the Blue Water sometimes runs out of fuel. So you can get in there on a Monday afternoon and not be able to get fuel. Uh, that's something that we like to be aware of. So it's always good to call ahead. But we did manage to have a nice trip back as we now pull in here at Hillsboro Inlet, Pompano Beach, our home port. Just a few more minutes uh, to our dock here in Pompano Beach. There's a Goodyear blimp flying off in the distance. Hmm. And of course, uh, don't have to remind you guys, but now the preparation for customs clearance, and that'll be done right at the dock using the CBP Rome app. And uh, you dial in on the app or activate the app. And of course, a customs agent will answer on the other side. You might have to pass the phone around, but you do have to have all of your crew on hand with your passports ready so that you can handle that clearance. So we did that dockside at our Pompano residence, and it only took us just a few minutes and it was farewell to Simon and Dee as they headed back off to the nearest boat ramp at 14th Street, which is just a few blocks away to rendezvous with their driver. Well, guys, uh, I am very sorry to say we have hit another half hour, but we are now completing that adventure with members of the Florida Powerboat Club 32nd Annual Bahamas Poker Run. It's a wrap, guys, but we have got plenty more here for the summer of 2023. Our next event, of course, is going to be the Northern Bahamas Island trip, uh, which started in Fort Lauderdale, went all the way to Abaco, including that beautiful little destination called Hope Town. So it's all right here with Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel. Guys, you can't afford to miss another show, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you'll get an update every time one of our new shows comes out. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming poker run events as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages.
Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page. And you guys know who you are. And I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now. Thank you.